Hello everyone, it's Maria here from pepperlyrose.blogspot.com.au. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia. Thank you all for joining me. And today um, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year because um, here in Australia it's New Year's Eve and um, I had a little uh, break <laughs> over the Christmas period so just wanted to wish everyone a belated Merry Christmas and um, a happy new year coming up in a few hours for us here in Australia so very exciting and being in Sydney it'll be great to see the fireworks so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I wanted to thank those that have uh, subscribed recently. I really do appreciate the support. And for those that have already subscribed, I can't thank you enough for your support. It really means the world to me. So today's project is going to be a 3D one. And we're going to be using um, some DSP. And it's, this is from our beautiful paper pack called Myths and Magic Specialty. It's part of a suite. And it has the most gorgeous papers. And this will be available in our new catalogue on the 2nd of January so it's not long to go and if you don't have a demonstrator here in Australia you can order through me at pepperlyrose.stampinup.net that would be great now there's this paper here which I can I think you can see the shine there and it looks like bubbles um, and this is the paper we're going to be using today because we're going to make a pillow box without the use of any um, dies or templates um, and it's very simple to do and you can do this in any size this is not a unique idea there's plenty of videos around showing you how to make your own pillow box I'm going to show you how I make mine and um, you can take that and do what you will with it <laughs> um, so we're going to be using the magical day stamp set and today we're going to be focusing on the beautiful mermaid here the cute little mermaid and we along with that we're going to use the magical mates framelit dies and we're going to use the mermaid again on that one too which is down here okay so we're going to use that and we're also going to be using a freebie in our celebration catalog and it's called celebrate you thinlets and it comes with three dies so it says celebrate you and amazing i think it's amazingly or is it amazing i think it's amazingly anyway um, and these dies will actually be available in the annual catalogue um, as well but you have the opportunity to earn them for free at the moment in our celebration catalogue so that's very exciting so we're going to be using the celebrate one today and we've got some gold foil so we're going to use that today as well okay so we'll get started on some stamping first and what we'll use is that mermaid stamp. Um, I've got some Whisper White cardstock and some Memento ink. And what we're going to do is we're just going to stamp the mermaid. Okay. So we're just going to stamp her on here. I'm just going to keep the block down for a few seconds. And how beautiful did that turn out what I'm going to do is I'm going to use markers on this and memento is actually a fade resistant dye ink if you let it dry and you can actually watercolor with it but I'm not going to watercolor today I'm just going to use plain markers so we're going to leave this to the side and let it dry and then we're going to bring out um, our DSP which is this one over here and I'm going to show you how to make a pillow box now this pillow box is going to like the, the idea of it is to be used as a party favor that's um, for mermaids and you can put some chocolates in there and the beauty is you can make them as big or as small as you like and you don't need a die to do this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up some DSP and I want my DSP, my um, box, pillow box, to be about four inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up to eight inches off that, uh, actually eight and a half inches. Okay, eight and a half. Got it to the eight and a half inch mark there. I'm going to cut that off. And I want the pillow box to be about seven inches tall and I'll show you but about one and a half inches will be cut off so if you minus the three 
it'll end up being about four inches wide. So maybe I'll go eight inches, okay? So you have an eight and a half, right? Eight and a half by eight, okay? Now, on this here, we're going to score it half an inch on one side. So I'm going to use this side over here for the half inch. So put this to the half inch and score, okay? And then I'm going to turn that bit around where the half inch is and I'm going to score that at four and a half. Okay? And with that, I'm going to now fold down on those score lines. And as you can see, we are now starting to get our pillow box. Okay, so let's make sure that that's done nicely. So make sure it's even. Okay, so I've just made sure the score lines are really good. Okay, really well pressed. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to add some liquid glue. Um, I tried using this with um, Terran Tape, and Terran Tape is fantastic. It's a nice, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a very nice strong glue, but I feel that um, it doesn't hold well with bendy type of um, projects, such as pillow boxes. That's for me. I, I find that over time, it is, um, it's no good. I'll show you, in, I'll just grab one that I've made earlier. Okay. I had, um, I had experimented with a couple of these. So um, this is one I had done with, with tear and tape. It sticks for a little bit, but the, it comes apart. See that? So that's one you can make this size similarly. I've made one slightly bigger using um, some DSP I had lying around, but I did use the Unicorn, and I used a retired um, Stampin' Up! Scallop Punch for that, but I think that turned out super cute, and I love that. So that's, that's a pillar box I've made, and it comes with like that, see? And you can make this any size you like. So that's the brilliance of this uh, project. Okay, so I've just let this um, stick down for... Um, just let that dry a little bit because there are shiny bits on this. So I'll come back once this is okay, dry. Okay, I'm back. I've just let it um, dry for a few minutes. So as you can see now, it is starting to look like a pillow box. Okay. So what you will need is either a plate, a plastic plate, something circular or um, whatever. Now, this is a lid. I've got here all of my markers. I keep it in a Cadbury's Roses um, lid. Uh, sorry, tin, so it looks like that. That's where I keep all of my markers, whether they may be alcohol or Stampin' Up! markers. And so I'm going to use the lid as a circular template, okay? So what I'm going to do is when I line this up, I make sure that I have it as far up as I can to the top and I have it equidistant on either side. So I'll just have a look at that and see if that's even, okay? Then I'm going to grab my stylus Okay, there's a, a fatter tip and a thin tip, as you can see. I'm going to use the thin tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just um, score into it, if you will. Just do it a couple of times because we're going through a couple of layers of cardstock. And as you can see here, it's scored into a circle, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do with that is we're going to do that on both ends so we'll do it on there as well so let's do it as far up as possible make sure it's um, equidistant on either side okay like that and the thin tip again of that stylus and just go like that now you can use a, pa a plate if you wish a dinner plate what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut along that score line that we made with our lid or our plate and it will look 
and you're going through both layers at the same time. So it's going to look like that. See that? Isn't that great? We'll do it on the other side the same. And cut that off. And that's done. Okay? See, it's starting to look like a pillar box. Now, to get to the underside of that, what we're going to do is we're going to put our lid or our plate and make sure that we get it on the ends there, okay? So we just make sure it's equidistant. So you see, you can see there. So we're going to make sure we're going to get those ends here like this. I can't explain it in words, so I'll just show it to you. Okay, and we grab our stylus again and we're going to score it using the lid as a template and we're going to do the same on the other side okay because it's got to be scored on both sides because it's quite thick this DSP is a specialty DSP so it is quite thick okay do the same here okay so now as you can see now we've got our perfect score line okay do the same now on the other side Make sure it's even. Yep. Okay. I like using the thin tip. It just gives me more control and a much neater um, score line. And we'll do again the same on the other side. And you can see where it's done it here too a little bit. And here. and do that. Okay. Okay. Now on one of these, we can put that lid away. I like to um, have like a little notch so it makes it easy to open and close. So I'm going to choose the end that has the, the join, if you will, um, there. So I'm going to have that on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my one inch circle punch can do it on either side doesn't really matter and I'm just going to put in a thumb notch so I'll make sure it's even on either side and I'm going to notch it in and there Ooh. so that's one done see that and I'll do the same on the other side use the thumb notch yep okay so that's it now what we're going to do with these score lines is we're going to help it along. So we just carefully um, fold in as, as carefully as we can along that score line and give it a little pinch as we go on all four sides. So how easy is that? Now I'll do the same on this side. Just pinch it in. Okay, we'll do it on all four on all four sides. So just carefully pinch it in. And you can't just press it in because it's on a you know it's on a circular angle there, so you can't really do that. So just give it a little, little pinch just to help it along. So now, let's put our gorgeous handmade pillow box together. See, that's one. And that's two. So you now have a perfectly constructed pillow box that is quite large. You can fit quite a few things in here. I've got a few chocolates here just, as a, just so you can see. They're quite thick. These are our little favourites. You can fit quite a few in there. Look, that's three. And there's more room in there for other things. So if you want to give your party favours with a difference, this is great. So let's put our pillow box together. And as you can see, it's just perfect. See that? And when you t t um, open it, that thumb notch makes it so easy. So that's this bit done. Perfect pillow box. Isn't it beautiful? So now what we're going to do is we are going to grab our mermaid image and I'm just going to go in a little bit on it okay that's quite close so what we're going to do is we're going to color 
this mermaid. So what we're going to grab is some, I'll just pick some. I'm going to pick Daffodil Delight for the hair. For the um, tail, let me think. Um, I'm trying to think which colours to use. Oh, geez, it's hard. Um, if I pick Bermuda Bay, it will blend in too much. So I'll just think of something. I'll just grab now my Blushing Bride. Oh no, I'll use Pink Pirouette actually. I'll use Pink Pirouette. Yep, Pink Pirouette for the face. And for the tail, I'm going to use, let me think, think, think. I'm going to use Rose Red. I'll use Rose Red. Uh, I don't have Melon Mumbo as a, as a marker, so I'm just going to use Rose Red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the um, skin tone first. And it's really, really simple. All I'm going to do is just colour in the skin. No fancy shading, nothing special, just in pink pirouette. And try and keep in within the lines. <laughs> um, and then I'll do that with the face. Colour that in. Okay. It's going to have a bit of a tan. Okay. So that's that done. I'm going to colour in her hair yeah, um, Daffodil Delight so colouring her hair like so just trying to keep within the line so I don't um, make a mess of it Now, once you've coloured in, you can put a base colour down, even with your um, regular markers. And then what you can do as well is you can add streaks. So you can go over the top and just add extra um, streaks, say if you like, or extra highlights in the hair, so that it's a little bit darker. So it just gives a little bit of definition. So I'll make this one a bit darker, and this one, and then I'll go the back here. And it just adds that little bit more shade to it. Quite like how that turned out. So if you want to add a little, a little extra colour, you can just to highlight things. It's not a problem, see? So there's a little bit of highlight there. See that? Isn't that great? All right. Now I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I will use Rose Red. It's quite a dark colour, but it's quite beautiful as well just um, stay within the lines and this will get lighter so it comes on a bit dark but it will get lighter If I had Melon Mambo as an ink pad, I would have used that. And I didn't want to use the blender pen today because this is a large area that I didn't want to um, use it on. Okay, so I've coloured the fish tail. Just colouring the white bits there. Okay. Now I'm going to go back with the pink pirouette marker and I'm just going to try and add some more rosy cheeks. So I'm going to make that area a little bit darker and just add some cheeks there. Okay. 
and that's my rain my mermaid all done so I'm just now going to go back up so I'll just focus out okay all right so now you can see the mermaid has some cheek some rosy cheeks and with even with you know with your regular markers you can add a little bit more um, kind of dimension to your colouring in if you just go over it again in the same colour and it just add, acts like shading in a, in a way. That's not the greatest colour but I think you'll understand once I put it together with the um, Bermuda Bay colour it looks quite nice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut out that mermaid with our Magical Mates Framelit die. So I'm just going to grab the Mermaid uh, Framelit out. Okay, so that's our Mermaid right there. And we're going to get some gold foil and we're going to get out the Celebrate. Oh, where's the Celebrate Framelit? Sorry, the Thinlet. Right here. Oops. So Celebrate that I'm going to put them through the big shot okay so got the big shot here I've got my magnetic plate and a cutting pad underneath and we're going to use that to cut it out make sure it cuts out well Okay, and we'll celebrate here. We'll put that through the big shot. Just go over it again because this is a more detailed die. Okay. So our mermaid has been perfectly cut out and I'll celebrate the same. I'll just put the pads away. Okay. And now, as you can see, that has all cut out and I'm just going to use my scissors and I'll just poke out those little bits there. And our Celebrate is now perfectly cut along with our Little Mermaid. Isn't that cute? So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this Little Mermaid on here along with the word Celebrate. I just thought I'd do something a little different. You can change this up any way you wish. This is just to give you ideas that not only can you use your gorgeous words on um, our word cutouts, on cards you, you can also use them on your 3d projects so I'm just going to grab some glue and I'm just going to stick these directly onto it so add your liquid glue your Tombow or whatever you have I'm a big fan of the liquid glue you can also use um, the adhesive sheets that we sell and you can die cut them together and that way it just adheres on straight away. You can do that too. I'm just using liquid glue because that's what I have on hand. So I'm just going to stick down the word celebrate. Try not to get glue on your foil. I'm just going to flatten this out just so that it can stick directly onto our pillow box. So that's a good idea to do that. So flatten it out and just have the word celebrate there and we're going to add our little mermaid as well so this is for those little girls that have a mermaid themed party or whoever wishes to have one okay and we'll put her like this Okay, I think that looks spectacular. Now we put our box together 
And there we have our beautifully made pillow box. Now you can change the dimensions to this. You can make this shorter, um, you can make it like this, shorter, fatter, you can do whatever you like. But with all pillow boxes, it's the same thing. Make sure that there's a half an inch and whatever the distance is between these. So this was half an inch by four and what have you. And um, so it's eight and a half inches by eight. And what I did was I scored on the long side at the eight and a half inch side on the half inch and on the four and a half inch. So then that means that when you put your box together, this is four inches wide, okay? And this one will end up being, I'm gonna use my trimmer to measure in the end what it measures. This ends up being a, so with the counting the two bits there, about seven inches long, roughly, okay? So you can fit, you know, quite large things in here. Go berserk, you can put anything, small gifts. Um, you can use this as a gift box or as a party favor, it's up to you. Okay guys, I, um, I hope you enjoyed today's project. Do give the Celebrate You Thinlets a try um, and you can get those with every $180 purchase during celebration because that's a level two item. There's two levels, this is at the 180. Um, the Magical Mates Framelits dies are a must along with the gorgeous Magical Day stamp set and the uh, DSP is to die for. I absolutely love it. I adore it. It is super, super cute. So, yeah, and always keep the pieces <laughs> afterwards. But isn't that great? Isn't that just the cutest? So, thank you so much for watching. Um, and if um, you don't have a demonstrator in Australia and you would like to have one, I would love to have the opportunity to earn your business. I kept this very simple for you. If you have any suggestions for any projects you would like to see, please don't hesitate to uh, leave a message below this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy New Year, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.